In this video, we are going to be learning about perfect squares and how to find the square root of a perfect square. So what are perfect squares? They are numbers that have two equal factors. So remember that factors are numbers that we multiply to get a product. So when the numbers that we multiply are the same number, their product is called a perfect square. So let's just take a quick look at a few numbers that I've listed here that are perfect squares, and I'll talk about why they are. So one is a perfect square. One is a perfect square because it has two equal factors. Those two equal factors are one times one. Four is a perfect square because it has two equal factors. Two times two is four, making four a perfect square. Nine is a perfect square. Why? Because three times three is nine, and three times three, those are two equal factors. Let's take a look at 16. 16 is a perfect square because four times four is 16. Now, 16 has other factors. One is one times 16, two times eight. Those are some other factors, but what makes 16 a perfect square is that it has, has two equal factors. 25 is also a perfect square because five times five is 25. 36, again, has lots of other factors, but what makes it a perfect square is that it has two identical factors of six. Okay, 49 is a perfect square because seven times seven is 49. 64 is a perfect square because eight times eight is 64. 81 is a perfect square because it has two equal factors of nine. And 100 is a perfect square because it has two equal factors of 10. So there's just a few perfect squares. There's infinitely many perfect squares. These are just a few that I feel like at the introductory level are good to know um, when we start moving into how to take the square root of a number, which is what we're going to do next. So the square root of a number is one of that number's two equal factors. So you're going to, how do I know I need to take the square root of a number? You're going to see what we call a radical symbol. Okay, that's that little check mark looking thing. Okay, we call that a radical. And the number under the radical is called a radicand. Okay, and if that radicand is a perfect square, then we can take the square root of that number and we'll get a whole value. So the square root of 16 is one of the two equal factors. The two equal factors of 16 are four. So the square root of 16 is four. Let's take a look at some other examples. Square root of 64. The square root of 64 is going to be one of the two equal factors. Well, the two equal factors of 64 are eight times eight. So the square root of 64 is eight. The square root of 81 is gonna be one of the two equal factors. The two equal factors of 81 are nine times nine. So the square root of 81 is going to be nine. Let's talk about what happens if there is a negative under the radical symbol. A negative under the radical is an interesting situation. Well, the only way I can get negative nine is to multiply three times negative three, and those factors are not equal. So that means that the square root of negative nine is going to be not real. We would venture into the world of imaginary numbers, which will be a little bit later in your math career. Let's look at what happens when the radical has a negative on the outside. That is possible. That is just gonna be the opposite of the square root of 49, which is the opposite of seven or negative seven. I hope this has been helpful and a good introduction to perfect squares and square roots.